Welcome to this tutorial. Today I'll guide you through constructing a Levy Jennings control chart using Microsoft Excel. If you don't already have Excel installed, take a moment to do so, then follow along with me as we create this useful chart step by step. Let's launch Microsoft Excel. Before we dive into building the chart, it's important to ensure all the cells are formatted to the same size for a neat, uniform appearance. To do this, select all the cells by pressing Command A on a Mac or Control A on Windows. Then, go to the Home tab, click Format, and select Row Height. Set the row height to 20 or adjust it to a size that suits your preferences. Next, go back to Format and select Column Width, setting the width to 5 or a value that will form a square when you merge one cell with another. This ensures that all cells are evenly sized, which is essential for a clean and organized chart. Now let's start creating the structure of our Levy Jennings control chart by merging cells and labeling them appropriately. Begin by merging the first set of cells and label it Runs. Directly below that, merge another set of cells, which will be larger, and label it Control Data. Next, let's move down and create two sections of nine merged cells each. These will be placed directly beneath the control data label. On the left side, merge nine cells that will serve as labels for your control limits. These merged cells should be half the size of the control data cell, keeping the layout balanced. Before you add the labels for the control limits, you'll need to format the nine merged cells as text. This prevents Excel from automatically treating your labels as numbers or dates. To do this, first select the nine merged cells. Then, in the Home tab, click the drop-down arrow to expand the Number Format menu and select Text. Once the cells are formatted as text, you can proceed to label them with the appropriate control limit names. To the right of the control limit labels, create another set of nine merged cells which will hold the control limit values. These cells will also be half the size of the control data cell. You can leave these cells blank for now, as we'll fill them with the control limit values later in the process. After you've completed the control limit section, continue moving down to create additional merged cells. Merge the next set of cells and label them rule violations. Below that, merge another row of cells and label them date followed by another row labeled Initial. These sections will be used to log any rule violations, the date of each control data entry, and the initials of the person who recorded the data. Once this basic structure is in place, it's time to expand the chart horizontally. Move to the right and create 35 sets of merged cells, corresponding to the control data for each day of the month, or control period. Each set of merged cells will include columns for the control data value, rule violations value, date value, and initial value. This gives you enough space to track the control data for a full month, including reruns if necessary. By creating this clear, organized structure, you ensure that your control data and any associated rule violations are easy to manage and review. Once the structure of the chart is set, the next step is to add borders and draw the control limits. This process will provide a clear, organized structure for your chart and make the control limits easily identifiable through color coding and line styles. First, let's add borders to the different sections of the chart. Begin by selecting all the cells that make up the top and bottom sections, including the runs, control data, rule violations, date, and initial cells. After selecting these, go to the Home tab, click the drop-down arrow next to the borders icon, and select More Borders. In the dialog box, choose your favorite line style and line color. I'll go with the thinnest line one, and for the line color, I'll go with black. Then click on the borders to apply the style. This will create a neat, grid-like appearance, giving structure to the top and bottom parts of your chart. Next, move to the middle section where the control limits labels and data will be placed. Select all the cells in this section. Click the drop-down arrow next to the borders icon and choose More Borders. For the line style, select the thinnest line, and for the line color, choose black. Apply borders to all vertical lines, including the left, middle, and right borders of the selected cells. This creates clear vertical divisions between the control limit labels and values, ensuring a structured and easy-to-read layout. Now, 
Let's draw the control limits to represent the different standard deviations. Each control limit will be drawn using a specific line color and thickness, making it easy to differentiate visually. To begin, go to the Home tab and click the drop down arrow next to the borders icon. Start by picking the line color. For the plus 4SD and minus 4SD limits, choose black. Then select the line style and choose a thick solid line. Once this is set, your cursor will change into a pencil. Use this pencil tool to draw the borders by clicking and dragging along the top of the cells that represent the 4SD limits. This creates a bold black line for both the plus and minus 4SD, making these limits clearly visible on the chart. For the plus 3SD and minus 3SD limits, go back to the borders dropdown, select line color, and choose red. Then, pick the thick solid line under line style. With the pencil cursor active, click and drag over the top of the cells where the 3SD limits will be. This red line will stand out, making the 3SD limits easy to identify. Next, for the plus 2SD and minus 2SD limits, return to the borders menu, select line color, and choose orange. Then pick the thick solid line from the line style menu. Use the pencil cursor to draw the orange lines at the top of the corresponding rows, ensuring the 2SD limits are clearly distinguished. For the plus 1SD and minus 1SD limits, go back to the borders menu, choose line color, and select green. After selecting the thick solid line, draw the green lines at the top of the cells for the 1SD limits. This will visually mark these limits with the green line, separating them from the others. Lastly, for the mean, Go back to the Borders menu, select Line Color, and choose Black once again. Pick the thick solid line, then use the pencil cursor to draw the line at the top of the row where the mean value is represented. This central line will be bold, marking the mean value prominently. To ensure consistency and improve readability, apply the same colors to the control limit labels and values. For the plus 4SD and minus 4SD, use Black. For the plus 3SD and minus 3SD, use red. Continue with orange for the 2SD limits, green for the 1SD limits, and black for the mean. This will maintain the color coding throughout the chart, helping the viewer easily identify each control limit and its corresponding data. Now that the structure and control limits are in place, let's move on to polishing the visual presentation of your Levy Jennings control chart. In this step, we will hide unnecessary grid lines and headings and apply background colors to different sections of the chart to enhance its appearance. First, to clean up the overall look of the chart, we need to hide the grid lines and row and column headings that are visible by default in Excel. To do this, go to the View tab at the top of the screen. In the Show section of the ribbon, you'll see checkboxes for both grid lines and headings. Uncheck both options to remove them from the view. This will give the chart a smoother, cleaner appearance, focusing the viewer's attention on the data rather than the background grid. Next, it's time to apply some color to different sections of the chart. Adding a subtle background color will help distinguish various areas, making the chart easier to navigate and more visually appealing. Start by selecting the cells in the top and bottom sections of the chart, including the cells labeled Runs, date, and initial. Once these cells are selected, go to the Home tab and click the Fill Color drop-down arrow. From the color palette, choose a shade that complements your chart. In this case, I'll go with blue-gray for a simple and professional look, but you're welcome to pick your favorite color. Just ensure it's a simple shade that doesn't overpower the data. For the middle part of the chart, where the control data and limits are located, repeat the process of selecting the cells. This time, I recommend filling these cells with a light gray color to maintain a clear distinction between the different sections. Again, you can select a different color if you prefer, but try to stick to soft, neutral tones that won't clash with the control limit lines or the chart data. With these changes, the chart will have a clean, professional look free of clutter and with a touch of color to make the different sections stand out. Now that the layout and visual formatting are complete, we will add the chart title and input the control limit values for your Levy Jennings control chart.
Start by adding the chart title at the top. Select the first row of cells at the very top of the chart and merge them into one single cell. In this merged cell, input the name of the test, the control, and the units. For this example, you'll enter glucose as the test name, N control as the control name, and milligram per deciliter as the unit. Next, let's input the control limit values. Focus on the nine cells to the right of the control limits label. First, you need to format these cells as numbers. Select the cells, then in the Home tab, click the Number Format drop-down arrow and choose Number from the list. This formatting step ensures that the values will display correctly. Now, input the calculated control values into these formatted cells. Here's an example of the values you might use. Plus 4 standard deviations, 112.4, plus 3 standard deviations, 107.7, plus two standard deviations, 103.0, plus one standard deviation, 98.3, mean, 93.6, minus one standard deviation, 88.9, minus two standard deviations, 84.2, minus three standard deviations, 79.5, minus four standard deviations, 74.8. After inputting these values, the control limits section of the chart is complete. Lastly, calculating these control values is straightforward using Excel functions. If you're interested in learning more about how to calculate control limits in Excel, feel free to comment below, and I'll prepare a separate video to guide you through the process. In this step, we will adjust the text orientation of the cells, input random control data, and insert a corresponding chart into your Levy Jennings control chart so we can see the data visually. First, we'll adjust the text orientation of the 35 merged cells that are located to the right of the control data label. Doing this will help make the chart more compact without taking up too much space. Start by selecting those 35 merged cells. Then, go to the Home tab and click the Orientation icon. From the drop-down list, choose the option called Rotate Up. This will rotate the text vertically and make your chart more space efficient. Next, we'll input the random control data. We want to create 35 random values that fall between minus two and plus two standard deviations. To do this, click on the first cell in the series of 35 merged cells. In that cell, type the formula equals ran between 85, 102. When you press enter, Excel will generate a random number within that range. Now, we need to apply this formula to the other 34 cells. To do that, click on the first cell that contains the formula, then drag the small square at the bottom right corner of the cell down through the other 34 cells. Excel will automatically fill in random numbers for each of those cells, all between 85 and 102. These will be your control data points for the chart. Finally, we'll insert the chart, select all 35 random data points that you just generated, then go to the Insert tab, and under the Charts group, choose a simple two-dimensional line chart. Excel will create a line chart that displays the random control data points you've just entered. In this step, we will format the chart so that it looks clean, professional, and aligns with the control limits we've created. First, let's remove any unnecessary elements from the chart that Excel includes by default. To do this, select the chart by clicking on it. Then, go to the Format tab in the ribbon. From here, click on the Chart Elements drop-down arrow to expand the list of available elements. Now, remove any unwanted elements from the chart. Start by selecting the chart title and pressing the Delete or Backspace key. Repeat this for other unnecessary elements such as the horizontal axis, legend, vertical axis major grid lines, or any default features that don't enhance the chart's clarity. Once you've deleted the unnecessary elements, we'll format the essential parts of the chart. Begin with the chart area, select it, and then, in the format pane, ensure the settings are adjusted to no fill, no border, and that no additional effects such as shadows or 3D effects are applied. We want the chart to maintain a clean and minimal design. Next, select the plot area 
and follow the same steps. Set it to no fill and no border and avoid adding any special effects like shadows or glows. Now, let's move on to the vertical axis. Select the axis and in the format pane, set it to have no fill, no line, and remove any labels or tick marks. This will give the chart a cleaner look. Finally, we will format the data series, which represents the control data line. Begin by selecting series one, then open the format data series pane. Set the line style to solid and choose a light blue color. Increase the line width to your preferred value. I recommend four and a half points for better visibility. Next, customize the markers by selecting a circle shape and adjusting their size. I suggest a size of 20 for clarity. Fill the markers with a darker blue color and remove the marker border for a cleaner, more polished look. To give the chart some depth, you can apply a subtle shadow to the data series, but be careful not to overdo it. We want the data to remain the primary focus. Now that the chart is formatted, it's time to align it perfectly with the control limits we have drawn. This step ensures that the chart visually represents the control data relative to the upper and lower limits. First, click on the chart area to select the chart. Then, click and drag the entire chart into position. You will need to adjust it so that the plotting area, the part of the chart where the data is displayed, aligns with your grid. Ensure that the left and right edges of the plotting area match the first and last control data points on your grid, and the top and bottom of the plotting area line up with the maximum and minimum control limits. This adjustment ensures that your chart fits perfectly within the framework of your control limits. Next, let us adjust the vertical axis to match the control limit values. After selecting the chart, go to the Format tab in the ribbon. From there, click the Chart Elements drop-down arrow and select the Vertical Value Axis. Once the vertical axis is selected, click on the Format Pane icon in the Format tab to open the Format Pane on the right side of the screen. In the Axis Options, input the minimum and maximum values that match the control limits in your grid. For example, if your control limits range from 74.8 for minus four standard deviations to 112.4 for plus four standard deviations, input these values into the minimum and maximum fields. This adjustment makes sure the vertical axis of your chart aligns with the range of the control limits on your grid. Once you input the correct values, the chart will adjust automatically. The data points should now align perfectly with your control limits, giving the chart an accurate and polished look. Now that the chart is perfectly aligned with the control limits, let's ensure it updates in real time when you input new control data. As you enter control data into the cells located to the right of the control data label, the chart will automatically adjust to reflect these new values. Simply type the data into the corresponding cells, and Excel will update the line chart dynamically. This is especially useful for ongoing monitoring, as the chart will always stay up to date without requiring any manual adjustments, saving both time and effort. Congratulations! You've now completed the essential steps to construct a Levy Jennings control chart using Excel. In future videos, I'll be covering more topics related to the Levy Jennings control chart, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching, and feel free to leave any comments or questions down below.